Joining me now to discuss is Bill Miller, the fourth of Miller Value Partners. He owns MicroStrategy. And, Bill, it's good to see you. Not only do you own it, uh, in, in mid-January when we spoke, you uh, spoke about the bull case, and it's more than doubled since then. Obviously, we know what Bitcoin prices themselves have done, but MicroStrategy, a bit of a leverage play on it. So I guess, what do you think at these levels, and, and, and where can it go? Oh, we absolutely love it still, Michael. Thanks for having me on. Um, it's our largest holding at about 14.5%. Um, and it still has a, a massive runway ahead of it. You know, it's our position that we are in the very, very early innings today of a massive capital repricing event. So we're, we're going to the digital uh, price, pricing of cap, did, capital is becoming digital, okay? And so if you look at the data on Bitcoin right now, what you see is that the realized capitalization this is very different. It's different than the market cap. It's the realized capitalization of Bitcoin. The average Bitcoin, the, what the realized cap shows you is the price at which every last Bitcoin has traded. That's mm -hmm. 24,000 today. Why is that important? Well, it tells you that the average Bitcoin holder is up 150% on their investment right now. It also tells you that $500 trillion of fiat right now has been, I, I'm sorry, 500 billion of fiat right now has been converted. Mm -hmm into Bitcoin. It's been repriced. There's hundreds of trillions of dollars of cap capital out there today, and we're only at 500 billion being repriced into Bitcoin. And we're right ahead of a halving event in April. So we are massive bulls on this. It's our biggest position. The other advantage you get with MicroStrategy, not only from a business perspective, in terms of being able to develop a new technology and businesses tied to Bitcoin, you also get a really interesting capital allocation strategy in that Michael Saylor understands basic math. <laughs> he understands very complex math, but he understands basic math around how to create more Bitcoin per share for their holders. So if you look at when he first started buying Bitcoin, they, only, they owned a lot fewer Bitcoin per share than they own today. And, he, and today, he can still arbitrage the price between Bitcoin and his shares in a really interesting and creative way, which can accrete value to shareholders that are long-term owners. Yeah, so that, we love it. That financial engineering uh, tweak absolutely seems like it's it's the basis, really, for, for how the company is valued. But I do wonder about, you know, you sort of alluded to, you know, developing technologies using uh, Bitcoin or blockchain. I mean, it seems like that's the missing piece. And I guess, do you need it? Because if you're talking about it basically just being, you know, another asset class that is early in its adoption, maybe that's enough. It certainly is enough. I mean, it's been enough for a lot of people and it will continue to be enough, I think, for a lot of people. Um, at the end of the day, you know, there, there, there are use cases around it outside of just, you know, tr turning fiat into a, a digital ledger of transparency and trust. So, yeah, there, there will be additional uses longer term. Again, I still think we're really, really early, which is why it's a really interesting and important technology for people to hold in their portfolio uh, just for the appreciation potential. Where are you uh, in terms of assessing the rest of the market here, the equity market, in terms of, uh, you know, whether it's a fruitful time to be hunting, you know, for, for well-valued stocks and companies or not? Because you've obviously seen massive momentum thrust in, in certain segments, other stuff maybe just grudgingly coming along. Uh, and, of course, the economy is held up better than many thought. For sure. The economy is in good shape. Uh, we're always... 100% invested plus. So we are finding good opportunities. There's still a lot of things, I think, in the home building space that are really compelling. So one of our other big positions is a company called Builders First Source, BLDR. We've owned that for a while. Um, it's still actually a really good value if you look at the, its position in the home building market as a dominant supplier to home builders uh, and their pricing power and their returns and their free cash flows. It's still a really, a really good thing to own that you can buy and put away for years. So we love that. Another one we own is um, Master, let me hold on, let me pull it up exactly, Master Brand Cabinets, MBC. If you look at the earnings potential of what this thing could generate in a few years, it recently came public in an IPO. It, it, it just, just had a great report. It's breaking out to an all-time high, and it's going to generate a lot more free cash flow in a few years than it does today. And it's trade, trades at a really good valuation. So there's a lot of really good things out there to buy.